Hey the Grasshoppers, it's Mr. Raymond here and today we are talking all things Civil War Tech. The American Civil War, which raged between 1861 and 1865, killed more Americans than any other conflict that our nation has ever been in. A low-end estimate of the number of soldiers that were killed in the American Civil War, North and South, was 600,000. That was 2% of the population, but some historians now say that that number could be as high as 750,000. An event as consequential as the American Civil War also led to technological advances, not just in warfare, but in other forms of American life that changed the way that Americans lived. Here are the top 10 most interesting pieces of Civil War technology. Number 10, submarines. That's right. I introduced you guys to submarines way back in the Revolutionary War when George Washington tried using the turtle against the British warship. But the Civil War sees the very first successful use of a submarine in warfare. The CSS Honey was a hand crank submarine that sunk twice on its test missions, but in 1864 succeeds in becoming the first submarine to sink a warship, the USS Housatonic. Unfortunately for the Hunley and her crew, the submarine was lost at sea, not to be found until 1995 when it was raised out of the water and is now on display in Charleston, South Carolina. Number nine is the game changers, the repeating rifle. In the advent of the Civil War in 1861, both northern and southern soldiers went off to battle with uh, antiquated old style smoothboard muskets. These cumbersome weapons uh, at best could get off maybe two or three shots per minute if you were lucky. However, the repeating rifle used an automatic firing mechanism which allowed a soldier to get off multiple shots per minute, completely changing the way that wars would be fought and making leaders rethink battle strategies moving forward. Number eight, photography. Photography completely changed the way that Americans thought about war for the first time on a large scale basis Photographers such as Alexander Gardner or Matthew Brady are going to make their way to battlefields to photograph the aftermath of the battles that happened. These images ended up in storefront windows and in newspapers and people were able to see them while they're eating their breakfast or drinking their coffee, completely changing the everyday average American's perception of war. Number seven, signal flags. Wigwam's a system of using flags to communicate information up and down a battlefield. It's kind of like Morse code, the dots and dashes, except with flags. Now, Wigwam signal flagging was often used in conjunction with the telegraph during the Civil War. But because the telegraph was so easily disrupted, all you had to do was cut the wire, Wigwam was relied upon heavily by generals in the Civil War. Number six, ironclads. Simply stated, ironclads are steam-powered warships that are covered with steel or iron. Now, they had been invented prior to the Civil War, but in 1862, the world saw the very first battle between the two ironclad boats, the CSS Virginia and the USS Monitor. They're basically going to pound the living daylights out of each other all day long and then both give up. The battle was a draw, but the writing was on the wall. The era of the wooden warship was now over. Number five. Angel Glow. Now, Angel Glow isn't technology per se, but this is just way too cool not to mention in this video. After the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, with over 20,000 casualties between the Union and the Confederacy, some of the wounded soldiers began to notice in the evening that their wounds were glowing a greenish blue color. Statistics then show that the soldiers who had the glowing wounds ended up having a higher survival rate. So what's up with this so-called angel glow? Fast forward about 140 years to the year 2001 and a 17 year old high school student who is a lot more experienced and knowledgeable about science than I am apparently figured out what it was. Without getting into it, because it surely can't, it's way too sciencey for me and I wish Mr. Graham was here to help me with this. He figured out that angel glow was caused by nematodes, parasitic worms that burrowed into the wounds and then would vomit up some sort of a bacteria that would glow. I can't get any more science -y than that, but that's Angel Glow, and that's kind of cool. Number four, railroads. Railroads played a pivotal role in deciding the outcome of the Civil War. The Union had a commanding advantage in the number of 
railroad tracks and just the sheer mileage over the south. And the federal government in the north took control of not just the railroad tracks, but the companies and the trains themselves and utilized and weaponized the railroad, transporting goods, men, ammunition, and just about anything else they needed to the front lines in order to win the war. Number three, hot air balloons. Yeah, apparently we even had an air force in the Civil War. And here to tell you all about it is Mr. Graham. So you've just joined the army and you're off to fight in the Civil War. You've told your commanding officer that you have great eyesight, awesome communication skills, and most importantly, you're not afraid of heights. Maybe you'll be a sharpshooter, or maybe you'll do something a little different. Balloons. That's right, you might be stationed a thousand feet off the ground, a good distance away from the front lines in a balloon. Your job would be to observe the enemy's troop movement, their numbers, where their artillery is, and then take that information and relay it back to the ground either with the use of flags or a telegraph uh, that would be on board the balloon to let your side know where the enemy was. These balloons were kind of interesting. They weren't hot air balloons like we'd see today. They are full of hydrogen. That's right, explosive, flammable hydrogen. And the way they got the hydrogen is they had a giant vat of acid and a big container of iron filings and they put them together, start a chemical reaction that produced hydrogen. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Number two, we have the mini ball, and there's nothing mini about it, nor is it a round shaped ball. The mini ball seriously was a conical shaped bullet. Conical shape means that it's shaped kind of like a football, it's not round, and it's hollow on the back end. That's important because it means that when the mini ball was fired out of a rifle, it would expand it would catch a hold of the grooves of the rifle, begin spinning, and now it's flying like a football thrown with a perfect spiral accurately through the air. Because it's made out of soft lead, when it would hit its target, it would flatten out, or what they would say, mushroom, causing bones to not just break, but to splinter, and all can do all kinds of internal damage. Typically, when you were struck by one of these during the Civil War, and if you survived, the only alternative at that point would be amputation. Number one, artificial limbs. Speaking of amputations, over 30,000 Union soldiers lost a limb during the course of the Civil War. And that's just the Union, the North. We don't have records to tell us exactly how many Confederate soldiers had amputations and survived those procedures. In order to help these soldiers, resume some semblance of a normal life. The artificial limb business became more and more innovative, creating limbs that were more lifelike, replacing the peg legs and the iron hooks of the days of old, helping these people move forward with their lives after this horrible conflict was over. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those were the top 10 most interesting pieces of Civil War tech that I could think of to show you today. And as we are wrapping up this school year with just a few more weeks to go, I just want to remind you guys, please just embrace the pace and remember, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home.